Hey, we're live. Greetings, everybody. This is Jeff Hester with SoCal Hiker, and uh, welcome to our challengers who are here for our April edition of the um, live stream for the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. Uh, I send an invite out to all of the Trailblazer and Explorer level challengers, um, and then we post a recording of it up afterwards so all everybody can take a look at it. But I want to give you a chance to kind of interact with me one to one. I, I sent out an email earlier, earlier today, just kind of a reminder about it. And uh, I was thinking about this, you know, when I first set up the, the six pack of peaks, I, I actually led small groups of folks on those hikes. And um, it was it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoy I mean, I like solo hiking, but I, I really enjoy hiking with other people, getting to know people. And I think there's really no better way to um, to get to know folks than, you know, spending time on the trail, you know, where you're hiking, it's tough work and all of that. At any rate, um, I don't get a chance to do that today. I mean, it's just too difficult for me to be able to hike with all of you, but I do love to be able to connect with you. So um, let's interact if you have questions. You can click on the big uh, on the question and answers tab. There's a big orange button called questions, and you can post your question there. Um, but you can also interact in the uh, the chat on the right hand side of the screen. And if you would like to join me on screen, just maybe say something to that effect in the chat, and I'll be happy to invite you. We can have you can ask your question or share your story, whatever it might be. Um, that'd be a lot of fun for me. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I want to, first of all, welcome the folks that we have right now online. I see Christy, welcome. Beverly, Stephanie, and Dan, thank you very much for joining. And I suspect that we'll have some other folks that who have uh, RSVP'd that will be joining as we get going here. Um, as far as Q&A, I had a few people ask some questions. One of them, the first one came from Tara Sturger, and she was asking about uh, thoughts about snow um, this year for the Six Peaks and when we can actually hike these trails as opposed to doing winter mountaineering on these trails. And, uh, and she also wanted to know about Mount Whitney because she has a permit for Mount Whitney on August 16th. So uh, Tara's not online yet, but uh, Tara, I, I do want to answer your question. So uh, snow on the Six Peaks. Well, I think most of most of us all know that Mount Wilson is pretty much snow free year round. It's very unusual when there's snow on Mount Wilson, and that's certainly the case now. Um, you can hike Mount Wilson almost any time. Um, you're lucky if there's some snow up there, and and in fact, this year there was early in the year after some of those big snowstorms, uh, some snow up there. And some people found that it got a little slippery on the top, a little icy, a little, um, you know, but nothing really treacherous. So it wasn't winter mountaineering. It was just a little slippery. Uh, maybe you needed to have some um, micro spikes. If you had those, that would have been handy to have. But right now that's clear. Um, as far as the other peaks go, um, well, I'll start with, I'll start from the, the, the end here. So San Jacinto, um, San Bernardino and San Gorgonio all have snow. So they're still not clear for hiking. There still requires at least some winter mountaineering on portions. Um, so if you're not prepared for winter mountaineering and have that skill or been through the training and have the equipment that you need for that, um, you might want to avoid those for now. Uh, Cucamonga has, still has quite a bit of snow. Um, the, the reports that I'm seeing or the hike logs that we've seen from folks that have done Cucamonga say about the last thousand feet is uh, there's quite a bit of snow and they've had to go pretty much straight up. There's no trail to follow. They're just following footprints and, and, and finding your way up to the top. Uh, and it can be slip, steep and slippery. So, um, you know, people have different ideas of what that what that means, uh, but what that means to me is that's a winter mountaineering condition and where you can slip and, and slide without anything to stop you unless you know how to self arrest, then that's winter mountaineering. So um, I can't comment more on that other than, you know, there have been people who have made it up there without 
winter mountaineering gear, um, they're, they're lucky in my view. So um, when that'll be clear, I suspect by uh, June, that'll be, there'll be patches of snow, but it'll be uh, mostly trail and, and hikeable by June. Um, I'm actually going to be hiking Cucamonga uh, uh, the day before the climb for heroes. So May 20th, I'm doing Cucamonga and I will bring along some micro spikes, trekking poles. I don't think I'll need crampons at that point, uh, but I think there still will be patches of snow for sure and, and maybe more. We really don't know until it gets a little closer to that. Um, uh, San, uh, Mount Baldy, however, um, there's sections that are already clear. So if you take the um, uh, Manker Flats and take the fire road up to the notch and then follow the notch up to Devil's Backbone around the side of Harwood and up to Mount Baldy, you're basically set. Um, there are patches of snow, uh, but Devil's Backbone is clear of snow. Uh, there are patches of snow in that little saddle between Harwood and Baldy, uh, but it's not treacherous per se. It's just, a, you know, you have to kind of walk across it, get to the rocks, and you'll see some patches here and there as well at the top. Um, so uh, Baldy's pretty, pretty good right now. Um, as far as Mount Whitney goes, um, that's going to have snow for a long time because of the, the heavy snowpack this year. So um, the best advice I can give you for that, and let's see, I have a, a website here. I'll, I'll pop a link into the chat. So let's see. In fact, I'll add this. Um, where did that go? Okay, so um, I'll add this to the chat. Um, the WhitneyZone.com has a discussion forum where you can get the current conditions on Mount Whitney. Right now, the trail's not even, the regular trail's not really open. It's covered in snow. Uh, so most people who are doing it at this time of year are doing the mountaineering route. And that's what you'll see in that thread right now. As, as uh, the year progresses, it'll open up. Um, to give you some idea, I... Uh, Joan and I, when we did the John Muir Trail, this is going back seven years now, but uh, 2010, we came, we went, we did Mount Whitney and came back down, and that was in August, and there were still sections that were covered with snow and ice on the trail. You could follow the trail all the way. Um, we were fine. It wasn't a problem. We didn't have crampons. We didn't even have micro spikes. Uh, but uh, there are some sections that will hold snow. And that was in a, a year that was just sort of average snowpack. This is above average. So it, I suspect it'll hang on there for a while. Um, let's see. Uh, Krista wanted to ask about, um, she had a couple questions. One was about fitness tracker rec recommendations. I, I don't really have any real particular fitness tracker recommendations, especially something that would serve as an altimeter. Um, I tend to kind of, well, I'll tell you what I do personally. Um, I, I use um, an Apple Watch, which doesn't have an altimeter per se, but it does track, you know, footsteps and that sort of thing. And this is the first generation. The newer generation has GPS capability built in. So uh, it does even a more accurate job of that. But mostly I use my iPhone and I use an app called Gaia GPS and that'll give you a pretty pretty fair estimation of not only um, your position, your mileage, but also your, um, your elevation where you're at. So I find that really, really useful. And I'm gonna do a quick demo of that in a moment. Um, it's not 100% accurate because you know, the GPS technology on a device like an iPhone or an Android device is not going to be nearly as accurate as a dedicated GPS from Garmin or one of those companies. But um, I find it's, it's good enough, you know, unless you're, you know, for, for the, the six pack, certainly, and for most trail uh, tracking, you're fine. Um, if you're doing a lot of off trail stuff and trying to navigate that way, then you might want something with a little more accuracy. But uh, for this kind of thing on when you're following trails, I think it's, it's usually a, a pretty good way to go. 
Um, if you have a fitness tracker that you like, if you're using a Fitbit or some other device, a Sunto um, watch or something like that, and you want to um, give a shout out for that and say that's worked out really well for you, just put it in the chat area there. Let's see. Uh, we've had a couple other folks join. Uh, Dan and Joan Oliver. Hi, Justin. Welcome. I'm glad you could join us. Um, we're going through some of the questions and answers on that tab. If you have questions, please feel free to add them to that. Um, you can also upvote things that you want to see um, see answered here. And you can use the chat as well. And if you'd like to join me on screen, just mention that in the chat and I'll I'll send you an invite to join me and we can you can ask your question there. Uh, let's see. Um, Stephanie asks, Hey, I'm hiking my first six pack peaks mountain this weekend, Mount Wilson. Uh, any advice you have or favorite parts of the hike? Um, Mount Wilson is, uh, people sometimes have like a love hate relationship with Mount Wilson. It doesn't have the high altitude and the stunning sort of mountaintop experience that you get on say San Jacinto. But it is really beautiful. I, I think one of the things that I really like about Mount Wilson is that it's very wooded, and it feels like you're in a you're uh, in a whole different world from Los Angeles. You know, you go down to if if you're taking the um, Sturdivant, going past Sturdivant Falls and up that way, um, you know, you just see these woods and these oak trees and the, the pine trees and it's there's running water through the creeks and it's just really, um, it doesn't seem like you're in Los Angeles or even in Southern California anymore. So I really like that part of it. Um, right now, um, the reports that we're hearing from the folks who are logging their hikes on Mount Wilson, they say that the gnats are out in full force. So, um, a lot of people are wearing head nets and you can get, a, I don't have one handy to show you, but you can you can get these at REI or A16. They're not too, there's just a few bucks. I, I don't know the exact price, but you know, under 10 bucks, you can get one of these head nets. Highly recommended to just keep the gnats out of there. I've been up that trail in the, you know, in May, June timeframe when the gnats are out and it's miserable. And I was, I was take my, um, uh, my buff and I'd just be sitting there whipping it back and forth and just try to keep them out of my face. And it's just, it's, it can be really miserable. Having a head net is going to be advisable this time. So I'd, I'd recommend going and grabbing one of those. Um, it is shaded most of the way. I, to me, if you haven't been to Sturdivant Falls, it's a, it's a short detour adds about, I think maybe half a mile to your total trip to go to Sturdivant Falls and it's worth doing. Um, when you get to Sturdivant Camp, it's kind of a cool place to check out. There's a big swing, there's a zip line, there's a few other little things that you can check out. And um, that's kind of a neat place to look at. Uh, if you're going on the weekend, Stephanie, um, right now the Cosmic Cafe is open at the top. And there's also a little museum up there for the observatories. You can find a little bit about the history of Mount Wilson and the observatories that are up there. That's kind of cool, and um, and 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 that was that. I guess that's about it, really. I mean, those are my favorite parts. Is is, is sort of the shady shadiness of it, uh, some of the history behind it. You know, the old cabins that are in there, and and all of that. And uh, most of that you'll see written up in the guide that I have on SoCalHiker.net for Mount Wilson. So check that out. And if you have any questions. Post them in the forums. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked here, um, how do you recommend learning the proper technique? Oh, uh, Christy says she can share about her Mount Wilson hike. I'm going to, let's, let's try this out here. Um, I'm going to see if we can invite Christy on screen. Using the iOS, oh, I can't invite you from the app. I'm sorry, Christy. But uh, uh, if you can share your hike log, we can put a link to that in the chat, or you can add a link to that in the chat. Be happy to do that. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, proper technique for using an ice axe. Uh, Beverly asks about using an ice axe. And um, uh, I took a class through REI, a uh, winter mountaineering course. Um, and so if you look at REI, they have a, it's actually a, a class that you have to pay for. We, we met at uh, Manker Flats um, near Mount Baldy and hiked up to the Baldy Bowl and found an area that was, you know, allow us to, you know, learn how to put on crampons, how to, you know, how to step up, down, move down different uh, inclines, how to use the ice axe properly, uh, both ascending, descending, and traversing, how to use it for self-arrest. Um, all of those things were taught in that winter mountaineering course. I do have a PDF uh, mountaineering guide that I can send a link to. Um, right now, it's in the SoCal Hikers Facebook group. I posted a link there, but I'll uh, I'll add a link to to here um, after this webcast. And uh, but I'd highly recommend getting trained on it. It's not just a matter of you know book learning. I think you have to get out and have somebody who knows what they're doing, be able to show you the proper techniques. Um, and, and then you have to practice it in a safe environment. So I wouldn't just say, well, I've read about how to do it. And now I'm going to go, you know, climb San Gorgonio and use an ice axe because an ice axe is kind of a dangerous thing. And you think about it, if you are falling down the mountain and you've got this thing with very sharp points, you know, you can impale yourself on that really easily. So you want to know, um, you want to know the proper technique, and I recommend getting some some training for that. Um, uh, REI has classes. There's also a number of uh, this time of year. I think most of their winter mountaineering classes for Southern California are done. Um, I'm not positive of that, and and they do book up pretty quickly. There are some classes, however, in the Sierras, and there's a number of companies that um, uh, set those up, and so you can do like a a whole day class up and out of Bishop or one or, or Mammoth and and uh, those would be really really valuable. Um, now you're ask okay somebody asked which REI barely asked which REI had this mountaineering class. Um, gosh, I don't recall. Um, I signed up for it on my the class I signed up for was online and I don't think it was a specific uh, REI. Um, location. It was just their online classes. So um, I'll double check on that though. Uh, Christy says she got a head net for $1.48 at Walmart and um, well worth it. Definitely. Yeah. So they're just a few bucks. Definitely worth it um, with the with the nets. That's one of the reasons that I like to hike Mount Wilson in the winter time and like January is a really nice time to do it because the weather's a little bit cooler and the gnats aren't out yet. So it's basically gnat free hiking. That's water under the bridge now. So maybe next time. Okay. Um, I, uh, I promised to do a, a quick demo of Gaia GPS. I'm going to do a short one or I'm actually going to attempt a short one. It's uh, Gaia GPS is the app that I use personally to track my hikes. And it can also be used to help you navigate your hikes. Um, on all of the hike guides on SoCalHiker.net, if you look near the, the resources in that hike guide, I'll have a link to download a, what's called a GPX file. And basically that has the GPS data of the hike that I did. You know, where I started, you know, the trails that I followed and so forth. And you can use that on an app like Gaia to um, basically make sure it'll show you where you're at in relationship to the track or the trail and make sure that you're on the right path, basically. Uh, so that's really useful. You can also use it just to track for your own purposes. So if you're doing um, an out and back route, for example, you'll know you know, that you're on the right route, how much further you have to go, that kind of thing. So it's really useful for that. Um, let's see if I can get this set up. Um, bear with me one second. I'm going to do, do my screen sharing. 
And with any luck, you can see um, you can see my iPhone over there. Somebody could give me kind of a heads up in the, in the uh, chat room. Let me know you can see that OK. Um, I know that the, the video quality and the audio quality of the recordings of, of these webcasts is not the greatest in the world. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a more, a little bit longer and more detailed demo offline. And I'll upload that separately. So it'll go into more detail. This gives you sort of an introduction to Gaia GPS. Thanks, Christy. Thanks, Dan, um, for the, the heads up. It looks like it's working. So I'm going to open up. Uh, I have everything organized in folders. This is my Gaia app. And uh, you can see here there's a bunch of uh, information on here about um, you can see a map. You can see a, uh, if I zoom in here a little bit, all these little tracks, these are tracks that I've recorded over time. So these are my tracks. You can see a little arrow here that, that represents my current location. And, um, and then you can see waypoints, these, um, uh, these little red flags or waypoints where I've, I've taken a photo during the track or whatever. So, um, it's, it's really useful to be able to kind of see that information. And if I click on one of the tracks, I can actually open that up. You can see the photo that I took if I wanted to go in and uh, let's see. Oh, that's for a particular waypoint. If I go into a particular track here, I could look at the stats for that, and you can see the altitude profile, the distance, um, total ascent and descent. All of that information is available. Now, one of the things that's really handy about this is I can go in and I can look at all of my past tracks. And so I can go in and say, oh, let's look at uh, Cucamonga. This was a, a hike I did uh, last October up to Cucamonga Peak. And you can see the photos that I took. I can go in and um, uh, let's see, take a look at the stats for that. You know, again, the altitude profile, all of that information is there. Um, you have to take it with a bit of uh, a grain of salt. Like I said, being on an iPhone or an Android device, it's not going to be the most accurate, but it's going to give you a pretty good idea. The thing that's great about this is that I can go to the GaiaGPS.com website and I can upload tracks. So if I've taken a track, um, if you've downloaded a track from SoCal Hiker or from another website, you can upload it to your account on Gaia GPS. And then basically it'll show up here under these tracks. So um, you can find one that you wanna do, let's say Mount Baldy. And I can say, all right, I want to download the maps for this track. And, you know, it'll ask you what maps you want to use. Um, I'm going to use Gaia Topo in feet in the open hiking map. So you can layer these maps with different levels of translucency uh, on top of each other and say, I'm going to download both of those. I say download. It's, it's going to tell it's telling me down here in the bottom. It's going to be 2.6 megabytes. So I know how much space it's going to take on my phone and I can hit download. What that does is that means now I can track and I can see the maps and I can see my location uh, when I'm doing Mount Baldy, um, even though I'm not online. So I could put my phone into airplane mode so I'm not draining it looking for a cell station when I'm out of service, but I still see my map and I still see my location on the map. So I really like it for, for that purpose. And um, let's see, we'll look at a different uh, San Bernardino Peak as an example. And I can go in, there's the map, there's the route that I took. You know, you can zoom in and you can kind of see all the little zigzags and some of the noise that it, um, it generates. But um, I can keep zooming in and there's quite a bit of information there. And uh, on this as well, when I look at any particular map, I can go into this little map layer. You can see all of the different um, maps that are available. So I can I can add uh, a street map 
or uh, NPS map, if I'm looking at a national park, there, there, it'll have that information available. So really, really cool. It, this app is, it's, um, it is not free, but to me, it's well worth it. And I'll put a link into the chat in just a moment, but uh, I'm gonna do a, a detailed sort of um, walkthrough of this thing and how, how it works and how you use it uh, and record that so that uh, anyone who wants to know, they can, it'll give them a, the basics for that. So um, that's it. That's, that's uh, the real quick overview of, um, let's see, there we go. Real quick overview of Gaia GPS. Let's go back to the Q&A and see if there's any other questions that came in. Let's see. Uh, no, no other questions. Hey, um, is it a monthly fee? Christy asks. There is not a monthly fee. I think for Gaia Pro, um, which gives you some additional capabilities, I think the um, additional map layers and things like that, there is a annual subscription. And I want to say it's 20 bucks. I'm not, uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but 20 bucks a year, I think, is what it will what it, what it was. I'll, I'll double check that. And when I post the detailed sort of overview of how to use Gaia, I'll include all of that information in there. So um, I, it's Gaia, Gaia Pro. You can use it on the web, um, but I, it's, it's really most useful when you're using it on your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android device. Really, really like this. Um, it's what I've been using for several, several years. <clears throat> and I use it to record all the tracks that you see on uh, SoCal Hiker. Um, let's see. One other thing that I wanted to bring up before we close out this this half hour quick webcast is talking about permits. Um, I had a question the other day about um, actually earlier today from somebody on Facebook who was asking about permits for Cucamonga Peak, and um, there are no permits required for Mount Wilson or Mount Baldy. However, an adventure pass, depending on who you ask, may be required. An adventure pass is generally required at Chantry Flats, depending on where you park and what trail you're taking. Um, adventure pass may be required at Cucamonga Peak. That's sort of, I, that's my recommendation is have it at adventure pass at both Cucamonga and um, uh, latest word I had from somebody else was that Manker Flats does not require an adventure pass, but it doesn't hurt. If you get an annual pass, I, why not throw it in the windshield? Um, you will require, uh, adventure pass is required at Vivian Creek Trailhead for San Gorgonio. So there's that. Um, at any rate, um, Cucamonga does require a permit, but it's self-issued at the trailhead. There's a little box with a pad of permits, you fill out your permit, you tear off the top half, the original, put it in a slot and take the uh, the carbon copy with you in case you're stopped by a ranger, which has never happened to me yet on that trail, but it could. Um, and permits are also required for San Jacinto, uh, depending on which route you take. If you take Marion Mountain, you'll have to get a permit from the ranger station in Idlewild. Um, you can also, uh, if you're taking from the tram from Mountain Station, uh, you can pick up a permit at self-issue at the Ranger Station in uh, Long Valley. Permits are also required for both San Bernardino and San Gorgonio, and those are the trickiest ones to get because you have to, um, what, what generally what you have to do is you have to mail or fax in a permit application. and. I actually, I have my permit application around here somewhere. Let's see. Oh, here we go. It looks like this. So they have a PDF that you can fill in and print out, and you have to mail it in and uh, or fax it in. And then they will mail it back to you, and or you can pick it up at the ranger station which is a little dicey. So I, it just takes a little more lead time for them, for you to do that. Now the permits for those two peaks, San Bernardino and San Gorgonio, are 
the most difficult to get because they have a quota on the number of permits they'll issue for a given day. So if if you find that the weekends fill up, um, you may want to look for a a, um, a weekday, even taking a day off if you need to to do that. Um, and let's see. Um, sometimes you might try doing an overnight. You might, you know, they might fill up on the day hike permits, but still have availability for the overnight. So that's an option. Um, and start early on, on getting those. There are uh, some alternate trails that we're hoping, you know, my fingers are crossed that they're going to open up from the, the fire they had. Um, uh, the word is, is that they're going to open up some of those trails on July 17th. Um, I haven't gotten any official confirmation of that yet, but uh, I'm hopeful that if that does happen, that it's going to open up some additional options for both of those peaks. So we'll see that. Uh, Dan was asking about uh, hiking Cucamonga via Middle Fork Trail. That's a great, I, great question. I don't know that there is a permit box for self-issuing permits from that direction. And so I don't have an answer for that. I actually have hiked the Middle Fork, not all the way up to the saddle, but just a portion of that trail. And um, I did not have a, a permit for that. So I can't really speak to that. I don't, maybe maybe I should have. Um, but I'll see what I can find out for you, Dan. And uh, I'll I'll post that into the, the notes when we post the recording of this. All right, folks. Well, hey, thank you all for connecting with me here tonight and uh, joining this little webcast. We'll be back in one month, and I think I've got to change the date slightly. Um, I'll double check that, but uh, we'll, we'll have that. And uh, yeah, Christy asked one more question about the permit request for San Bernardino and San Gorgonio. Yes, you can get that online. I will share the link to that. It actually, if you go to the San Bernardino and San Gorgonio uh, guides on SoCalHiker.net, we have a link to that permit information as well, but I'll share it with the re recording of this video as, as well. Um, next month, May, uh, many of you may, may be joining the Climb for Heroes on May 21st. Um, I'll be out and doing, I'll be there with uh, Team SoCal Hiker uh, we'll be hitting uh, Mount Baldy on the 21st, Sunday, the 21st. If you're interested in joining us, let me know, and uh, we can get you signed up on the team. Um, and it counts towards your six-pack, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, uh, and then when we, we do the, uh, uh, the the video next month, it'll be probably the week after that, so or the following Ooh, the following Wednesday after that. So whatever that date is, and I'll double check that. You'll get look for, look for the invite for that about a week before. And um, thanks again for everybody for joining. Be sure to join the discussion in the SoCal Hiker forums, where a lot of people are getting you know connecting with other hikers and sharing their advice, get asking questions. It's a way to continue the conversation even when we're not here. So uh, until next time. Happy trails, and I'll see you online. Bye.